This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 2.2, Formatting Cells and Ranges. Let's get started. With our 2.2 workbook open, what we want to do is go to the range listed in the textbook, which is A13 to C14. This time what we're going to do is we're going to use our go to function just to practice using that skill. So we hit Control G. I'm going to paste in our reference from the textbook, which is that A13 through C14. I'm going to select OK. And once I do that, this whole range is automatically selected for me. Now we need to merge it so that this hyperlink is centered in a double height cell across the three columns. So to merge, we're going to go onto our Home tab in the ribbon. We're going to select Merge and Center and hit Enter. So now that we've done that, we have a single large cell that spans what was previously six cells. Um, and, I, you know, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of using merge uh, just because it, it does or it can cause some layout challenges. Uh, but in this case, uh, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to cause a problem for me or at least in, in the future for the people who would use a worksheet like this. So uh, it's good experience to, to understand how it works. Now if there was data in more than one of these cells, you'd get a warning box and it would tell you that, hey, if we, uh, if we merge all of these, you're going to lose all the data except for that which is in the upper left column or upper left uh, cell in that particular range. So be aware of that when you go to merge cells together. Next, we need to move to our expense statement and select the entire worksheet to turn on text, text wrapping. So we're going to move to the next worksheet by hitting control page down, which moves us to our expense statement, which is uh, uh, quite a garish example of an expense statement. Uh, I don't know if I would recommend using their uh, stylistic choices here, but let's go through the process that they've requested so that we're familiar with how to perform all of the techniques. So we want to select the entire worksheet. The simplest way to do that is to click on this triangle in the upper left hand corner. As soon as I do that, the whole worksheet is selected. So, and, you know, so I don't have to worry about uh, trying to drag or doing anything else to select all those. Now we want to turn on text wrapping. And so a text wrapping is again in our home tab and we call it wrap text. So we will select that item. And you'll notice that once I've done that, uh, that some of these rows, like for example, 10 and 11 and 9, are now taller than they were before. And that's because what they've done is they've taken these words here, I'm going to undo, which didn't all fit in that cell, or at least you couldn't see it all in the width that what you had provided or the, the designer of the sheet had provided. And then when we go to text wrapping, I'm going to redo that. Now what it's done is it's taken all that text, which was, was hidden to the right, and has essentially put an imaginary carriage return and moved it onto the second line. Now I've called it imaginary carriage return on purpose because it doesn't actually perform a, a carriage return. It's still just one line of text, but it has wrapped it so it fits within the range or the space that the sheet is laid out on. Next, we need to turn off text wrapping in rows four, five, and nine. All right, so we want to do that here on row four. Now, in order to select multiple rows at once, I'm going to hit hold my control key. So I've hit hold, held control, I've hit five, and I'm going to do it again here on row nine. And now what we're going to do is go back to our home tab and unselect the wrap text option. All right, now that we've done that, those rows have gone back to their original size. Now we want to right align the entries in column A. So for column A, if you remember, we can um, select that by hitting Control Spacebar. Now, actually, it won't let me do that because there is a uh, there is a uh, merge cell here. So let's go to column um, column A again, and uh, this time I'm going to click on the top here, and I am going to select the right align feature, which is in the Home tab in the alignment section and here is our align right and so when we've done that you'll notice that these particular words instead of starting on the left hand side of the cell have now stuck over onto the right hand side of it. I'll undo that so you can see the change 
Okay, so before they're over here on the left, and now they're going to be over here on the right. Now we want to bottom align the headings in row 9. So I'm going to select my row 9. I'm going to go into our alignment section on the Home tab. Default is to have a top align. I'm going to select the bottom align. And it doesn't show a whole lot of difference here. Um, you'll just see them shift slightly down. But if this was, for example, a taller cell, so let's make that taller. So now you can see that these stick on the bottom of the cell like they're stuck down there by gravity. Whereas if it was the previous way, uh, they would stay up at the top for us. So, All right, now we want to apply the angle counterclockwise orientation to the headings in row 9. All right, so I'm not a big fan of, uh, of angle text. Uh, what you'll find is users will start to crank their head in order to match the alignment that's on the screen but we'll show you how to do it since it is one of the requirements. So again, we're in going into our alignment section on our home tab. We're going to select orientation, and this time we're going to uh, angle counterclockwise, which is the first option on the list. Now, once we've done that, we can see all of these labels are now uh, tilted up and to the right. Uh, you know, unfortunately, they don't all fit in the room that's provided. Uh, so let's make this a little taller this row here and see if we can get a few more of them to fit so you know I don't I don't believe that we're any further ahead in making an effective form here by doing that so I would encourage you to avoid it uh, in your own workbooks and worksheets in the in the future all right so now we need to format one of our cells and so we want to go to f cell K10 so here's column K cell 10 and we want to display its contents as currency with a US dollar symbol. All right, so for our number formats, we're going to go into the number section here. Now if we select this dollar sign, you'll actually see that it selects the accounting format rather than the currency. Uh, it, it is a little confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this number format drop box and click it. Once we've done that, it's going to give us additional options for formatting. In this case, we're going to go to currency. And we want a US dollar symbol, which is this one here. And we want uh, no decimal places. So in order to do that, we are going to click these down arrows until we get to zero. You can see in our sample that those decimal or the, the cents essentially have been eliminated. So we'll click OK. Next, they want us to apply the same formatting to the, the cells beneath it. And and uh, so what we want to do here, and, and based on the examples that they gave in the chapter, they want us to use the drag um, function. So we're going to click on this. We are going to drag down. OK. And what we can actually do is, just to confirm, we can click this down arrow here. And we can say we only want to fill the formatting. Now, in this case, because it was a formula, it's not a big deal. But we're going to select Fill Formatting only. And so now if there had been constants or anything in these cells, they would not be carried down, but the formatting has. Now, there is an issue with this, and I'm, I'm not really happy with the example for that. What it's also done is it's dragged this underline or this, this border on this cell, and it's dragged it down as well. So if it's, it's changed it in, in a few other ways. Now, you may be okay with that, uh, but by dragging in that manner, you don't actually have control of which formatting gets brought down. It's going to bring everything. So that, that may or may not be what you want. And our last step on this garish uh, worksheet is to apply a accent style to cells. So in this case, we're going to go in A9 through K9, so which is this section here. And we want to enter a style. Now, I actually use styles quite a bit uh, when I'm designing my sheets. So what we want to do is to go to our styles. And in this case, because my uh, my workbook is not as wide as yours might be, a lot of times there's a sample list automatically here. But I'm going to click Cell Styles here, and this gives us all of our examples. And we are going to use the 20% Accent 2 option. So now we have this uh, peach type color. We've completed all the tasks in this 
section. Thanks for watching. I look forward to you joining us in our next video for the Excel 2016 Core Exam Study Guide. Thanks for watching.